Hi guys, I'm EVM and welcome back. Now, roughly a month ago, I uploaded a video where I machine polished and ceramic coated the Model 3. And a lot of people said, oh, that was fun, I enjoyed that. Can you tell us what you used? Because I might try it myself. Now, I deliberately didn't put anything uh, in terms of what product I used in the video because it's kind of meant for a more professional, amateur, professional sort of level thing. I used to do this professionally, which is where it came from. But ultimately, someone could have done more harm to their car than good if they'd have attempted to do it without preparing the surface properly or using the right products or just ultimately having to end up buying a lot of things, uh, spending a lot of money and then not knowing what to do with it. So I thought on this one, our other car, which I have quite frankly completely neglected over the past maybe a year, it's probably been that, about that long since I give it a proper clean. Uh, I thought, let's do another video, but this time only use products that are easily available, either online or at Halfords, for example, and just do things, just use methods that are very easy to use. So basically, anyone can recreate what I'm doing in this video. At the end, I will tell you what products I use and which ones I'd recommend. Believe me, it looked a lot worse than this when I started. In fact, here it is now. The paintwork, even after a clean was like sandpaper, the black plastic around here, uh, the wheel arches, and there's a lot of that on the Mini, that was more patchy and light grey as opposed to black. Uh, so there's a, there was a lot of work to do, a lot of decontamination, a lot of cleaning, and ultimately it's, uh, I think, a very common problem that people face. So if like me, you've got a little bit too much time on your hands, and you want your car to look gleaming and get ready for summer, then uh, hopefully you'll enjoy this. The first step is an optional one, it's using the snow foam gun and I'll come to that later on in the video. This is a pre-rinse and it basically soaks the car with a special formula which eats away the dirt and grease. So when you give it its first jet wash, the dirt comes off a lot easier. The benefit of this is that when you do the first contact wash, there's less between you and the paintwork, so you don't have to be as abrasive when you're cleaning the car, and that can minimize swirls and scratches. Now notice I'm cleaning the tire here whilst that's doing its work, and I say tire, not ally wheel. If you have a clean tire, the tire shine will last a lot longer because it's going directly onto the rubber, not onto dirt on top of the rubber. Now for the car's first jet wash, this is pretty straightforward, I think you know what it entails, and it just will get rid of the bulk of the dirt, so when we do the first contact wash, there's less between us and the paintwork. Onto the alloy wheel now, I'm just using normal car shampoo, which I'll be using on the car in a second, and a clean cloth. This is because pretty much everyone has them, and they're easily available. If the wheel is particularly dirty, then use a proper alloy wheel cleaner. It's just a little bit more abrasive. Now it's time to give the car its first proper contact wash. I'm using the snow foam gun again to spray the shampoo onto the car, more on that later. But the first step is to use a brush to get into all the places that a wash mate cannot get to. This for me is crucial, whether it's a basic quick wash or something like this. This is the perfect example of somewhere a wash mitt will never get to. So get yourself a brush for the sake of what is three or four pounds. The rest of the car is much easier to clean with the wash mitt because I only have to go over everything rather than do the little niggly bits. Quick rinse of the car and then I'm ready to do the door shuts and the bits that you just can't get to with a wash mitt. can't really see it on camera here but this is absolutely filthy and full of dirt and grime and there's only one way you're going to get rid of it a bit of all-purpose cleaner and a brush now 
Now I'm sure I'll get some stick for this because it's there's an engine on the channel but ultimately it's part of the car and it needs cleaning. Most EVs like my previous Leaf for example have something under the bonnet like this that needs cleaning. If it's on the car it gets cleaned, that's the rule. Yes, I'm using the jet wash to rinse it down, but the jet wash is not turned on, that's just hose pressure, so water won't get forced into anyway, I don't want it to. Now this is something which is very crucial to this detail, claying the car. It will make the biggest difference to the paintwork, and it's something you need to be patient with and make sure you do the whole car, not just get bored and skip a lot of it. You can see just from the bonnet alone how much dirt came off this one and how bad the paintwork was. This is optional, it will chemically decontaminate the paint as opposed to physically decontaminating it with the clay bar. I'll show you the product in more detail later on in the video, but basically it turns purple when it finds something it wants to get rid of, so you know it's working. Not too bad on this car after I've cleared it though. Another quick rinse for the car and then another very quick wash just to get rid of any residue from the claying and decontamination procedure. Once that's done, this is its final rinse and then I'll show you what a car looks like when it's got no protection on it whatsoever and the water just sits there, nice and flat, no beading and I'll show you this at the end so you can see the difference before and after the car has been protected. Notice how flat it is on the paintwork, not doing anything at all. Moving on to the glass now, giving it its bulk clean, I'll then go over it again right at the end just in case I get any marks on it, but you'll notice I've put the car in the garage where I admit it is easier to work on, but if you don't have a garage it, that, that's fine, it won't make that much of a difference, just don't work in direct sunshine. Wax is designed to go directly onto the paint, not on top of shampoo or polish residue, which is sat on the paint. So this product is optional, but I would recommend it. It's called Panel Wipe. I'll show you it at the end, and it's kind of like isopropanol, and we'll just leave it with a nice, smooth, glossy finish, which has no residue on it, and the wax can bond directly to what it's designed to paint. Wax time now, most of you know what this looks like, I'll show you what I've used at the end as usual, but this is just a case of getting your product and reading the instructions, simple as that really. Now it's just a case of getting rid of the wax, again following the instructions. If there's one thing I will recommend, it's having a decent microfiber that's designed for this job. Some come with one in the product, whatever you buy, but for the sake of a couple of quid, it is worth getting. Now this is something that is optional. It's something called G-Technic C4, and it basically restores dark trim back to its original color. I have a lot on this car, and ultimately it's very gray. You start off with just giving it a wipe down with the panel wipe to make sure there's nothing between you and the plastic and then apply as the instructions say so. Now of course not all cars have black plastic but you can see the difference this is making and out of all of the products on the market for me this is by far the best and will last at least a year if done properly. If your car's black plastic isn't that bad or you just don't feel comfortable doing this, I will give you an alternative later on in the video. And 
of course, the engine bay that we cleaned now needs dressing to make it nice and shiny. There's no real reason for this other than just for nice pictures, but for me, a clean engine bay is the finishing touch to any car, whether it's in an EV or a petrol engine car. Finishing touch now, simple tyre shine. And after that, I've just gone over the car to make sure there's no stray fingerprints or anything like that marring the finish. And here we are, the final product. Looking nice and shiny, doing all the usual sweeping moves that all YouTube channels should do when looking at a car. Normally, especially on the black parts of this car, I would have machine polished it so there are no swirls or anything like that in it. But again, this was meant to be a recreatable detail, something anybody can do anywhere without needing any sort of special products or any special knowledge. I should warn you that detailing and buying detailing products can get slightly expensive and slightly obsessive in that way that blokes do. Just like when you have a newborn baby, you buy loads of stuff you'll never use, or if you go camping, you end up coming out with a collapsible kettle you never really wanted. Car detailing is very much the same. Half of the stuff that you think, ooh, I want that, I'll buy it, you probably never end up using. Oh, and don't forget about the door shuts, they need protecting and cleaning as well, they're technically on the outside of the car and usually accumulate a ton of dirt and grease and grime. Now remember before when I showed you what water looked like on a car that wasn't protected, it's just flat, it just sits there, no beading whatsoever. Well now I've finished the car, I've done the same thing and this is what it should look like when a car is finished. Any water pretty much, especially if it's falling from the sky as rain, isn't clean. So if it falls on the car and then dries off, anything in that water stays on the paintwork. So the more that can fly off, the better. Right, now that's over, let me tell you what products I used. Now this is something which kind of divides the detailing community because some people are quite frankly detailing snobs and they're only happy if the product that they use comes from a specific thing, from a specific cave in a specific forest from the middle of Brazil. At the end of the day, if a product does the job, that's all that matters. And to be honest, it's more about how you use it and the techniques you use than the product. Uh, my easy answer to the question of what should I use is, quite frankly, if you want to make it simple and easy on yourself, something that's easily obtainable in shops or online, good value, sometimes on offer, just stick with Autoglim products, or maybe even Meguiar's, but I'll stick with Autoglim in this video just to stick with one company. Um, there's nothing wrong with them at all. They do very good work, very good products. Some are excellent, some are all right, but. For the most part, they offer an entire range of easily obtainable, easily affordable stuff that does a very good job. You could give a very good detailer just Autoglim products to work off and that car would look immense. Again, it's more about the technique than the products you use. Now, my personal preference is a company called G-Technic. I will show you a couple of the products in a second of what I used in the video just now. But ultimately, they're pretty much only available online or in specialist shops. That's not really a problem, you can buy them from Amazon, but they are a little bit more expensive than the Autoglim equivalents and they don't have an entire range of stuff. So it's up to you really. If you want to stick with a single brand, there is logic to that, but you don't have to. You can pick and choose. The only reason certain detailing snobs out there don't like Autoglim as an example, or Meguiar's, is because they sell to retail. You can buy them in Halfords and it's that reason alone they don't like to be associated with something that everyone else can buy. 
So let's move on to what I used in this video. And I will again put stuff in the description below, links to the various things I'm mentioning if you do want to buy what I'm about to mention. First step is washing the car, the shampooing, if you like. Now there are two options with this. One is a bit quicker, but slightly more expensive to buy than the other one. The first one is the two bucket method. Basically it's just what most people are familiar with, a bucket with some shampoo in it and another bucket with just clear rinse water. If you don't know what the two bucket method is, method is stick it into YouTube and you soon will. It's very straightforward. If you do want to go down that easy, cheap method, you just need two buckets. You don't need all like this, just 99p buckets from B&Q will do. Um, obviously a wash mitt, but in terms of the shampoo, I've gone and forgotten it. I'll go get it. You can probably tell it's been a while since I've used this last. Auto Glim Body Work Shampoo Conditioner. Absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. It lasts ages and uh, it does the job and it's relatively cheap as well. But if you want to use the method I used in this video, then you'll need one of these. A snow foam lance. Now for me, the main reason, and I will ignore pre-rinse for a second, I'll come back to that. It's a time saving device. That's why I would use one of these. It looks cool. You can show off to your neighbors, but ultimately it saves me time every time I wash a car. The only thing you need to be fully aware of is to make sure you get the fitment that fits your jet wash. This fits mine. I have a Nilfisk jet wash and that fits the end of the gun. If you have a Karsha washer, for example, make sure you get the Karsha fitment. Otherwise it won't fit whatever it is you've got. And get two bottles. So you can unscrew this basically, get your pre-rinse and then screw it on. So you can switch between products so make sure you get a spare bottle so it's a lot easier. So you only need one bucket, a rinse bucket, because as I said, you're literally spraying the shampoo on the car, wiping it down, rinse, wiping it down, rinse, spray some more and keep going. So it does, it does speed things up, it really does. And then all you need, as I said, is your bucket. Now onto the pre-rinse. It literally is optional, as I said in the video, and it's just as it sounds, a pre-rinse of the car. Think of it like you're pre-rinsing your dishes or pots and pans before you put it in a dishwasher. It, it does the same job. You're just covering the car in a, like a shampoo, basically, which eats away the grime and dirt and grease. So when you give it its first jet wash, most of that stuff has come off the car already. So when you give it its first contact wash, you're not rubbing as much into the paint to get it off. So if you are using one of these, what would I recommend then? Well, I'm gonna stick with something that's nice and easy again. We have Auto Glim Polar Blast and Auto Glim Polar Wash. This is your pre-rinse, this is your shampoo. And it is diluted, I think it's uh, one in five, basically, so it lasts ages. Now, in terms of the wash mate and things like that, all I'd say is, look, you know, go onto a detailing website and buy something that's about a 10, 15 pound wash mate. That typically guarantees it's a decent quality one. If you want a specific mention, again, I'll put one in the uh, description below, a G-Technic wash mitt will be more than good enough. But one thing I would definitely spend the five or six pounds you need to on, and that's something I mentioned in the video, a brush. These things are worth the weight in gold for me because it's the only way you're gonna to get to most of the car. Get two or three of these or, or, or more if you want. One for your washing, one for your, pff, your engine bay if you're bothered, one for the interior. Um, so at the end of the day, it just makes life easier. You can get in all the nooks and crannies and that's what makes the difference between a quick wash and a quick detail. Right, now claying is something which is probably the only thing in this video that you may need to look up if, you, if you've never seen it before, if you're unfamiliar with it. Just again, put it into YouTube, how to clay a car. It is very easy, it's very straightforward. It's not difficult at all, but there is a certain technique to it. I'm using something called Built Hamber, just because I've, I've, I always have. Meguiar's do a clay bar product that you can get from Halford, so that will be fine as well. Now for me, how a car is dried is just as important as to how it's washed. So just get yourself a decent drying towel uh, and, and just give it a wipe over. It doesn't have to be bone dry, just literally wipe it down. It's nice and gentle and it gets rid of the bulk of the water so you don't end up with those drying spots as well. Same with microfibers really. Buy a cheap pack of 10 or something like that for you know your stuff that you don't mind getting dirty, the, the wheels, the engine bay, the door shuts, things like that. But for your final kind of buff off, you know, after you finish your wax or whatever it is you're using to put on in terms of protection, get so you know, just get a couple of decent ones. Um, again, G-Technic ones for me are a nice, easy go-to. Keep the microfiber 
doing the same job. So if this has always been your glass cleaner version or the, you know, buffing your wax off, keep it doing that. Don't mix its purpose. So don't use it for glass cleaning one day, even if you're gonna wash it in between and then for shampoo in the next day and, and whatnot. Keep, keep it doing the same job. Like anything that I mentioned in this, just read the instructions and follow them. It's, it's literally as straightforward as that. Now, the wax I used, or the protection on the car, I used, again, a built hamber. It's called double speed wax, just because it's pretty easy to put on and take off again. There are a myriad, a million things I could have used on this. I just picked a wax that I already had, and this is what I had in stock. For me, if you just want something nice and easy that'll last a few months or more, then I will use a G-Technic C2. That's, that's, that's literally spray, wipe on, wipe off. You can't get it wrong. Have a play around, basically. Have a look around about what wax or sealant appeals to you on the various websites. This is the G-Technic panel wipe. There are other versions of different uh, brands around, but this for me is the one I would always go for. In fact, whilst I'm on the subject of wax or sealants for that matter, only put a thin layer on literally scoop up a ton of wax and then really slap it on as if it's going to protect it more. Once you've buffed it off, you're still left with a very, very thin layer. So it doesn't matter how much you pile on top of it, you're left with the same amount of protection. You're just wasting product if you're really slapping it on. For the other stuff that I've mentioned in here, like tyre shine, auto glim tyre dressing does the job. Same with the engine bay, just gone for something that works, that's easily obtainable, and it's quite effective, quite frankly. No doubt because every car is different, there is something that I've skipped over or not really mentioned that you have in your car. So again, feel free to use the comments to ask any questions and I'll try and answer them. Uh, and please do subscribe, it really does make a difference. Um, so that's pretty much it really, I don't think I've forgotten anything. Okay, well hopefully that was useful. Let me know if you want me to do an interior clean video, like a realistic interior how-to, um, and I'll do that because the Mini does need a really good clean on the inside just as much as it did on the outside. Um, so that's one thing I might do in the future, let me know. Um, so yeah, thank you for watching guys and I'll see you soon.